Questions 1 to 5 in the ACET purple paper. Question 1. Which one of the following is the most direct consequence of production of hydrochloric acid by parietal cells? So, parietal cells produce hydrochloric acid, which acts on the D cells, and it increases the activity of the D cells and therefore increases the amount of somatostatin. Now, somatostatin has an inhibitory effect, so it inhibits both chi cells and parietal cells, which produce um, pepsinogen and hydrochloric acid, respectively. So let's go through each of these answers. Um, A, increased production of HCl. So when parietal cells produce hydrochloric acid, the acts on the D cells, which produces somatostatin, which um, inhibits parietal cells, which would therefore decrease the amount of um, hydrochloric acid being produced. So therefore, A is incorrect as hydrochloric acid will inhibit the production of um, hydrochloric acid, not increase it. B, increased production of histamine. Well, this is an extremely, extremely long path, but um, so parietal cells, they produce hydrochloric acid, act on D cells, produce somatostatin. Somatostatin inhibits those chi cells. So the uh, therefore, we will see less production of pepsinogen. Now, pepsinogen um, aids in the production of peptides, so therefore, we'll see less production of peptides. Um, less peptides means less activation of the G cells, that bottom um, square there on the diagram, and therefore uh, less less uh, sorry stimulation of the G cells leads to less production of gastrin. Less production of gastrin leads to less stimulation of ECL cells. Less stimulation of ECL cells leads to less production of histamine. So, therefore, through that huge path. Um, Increased production of hydrochloric acid will actually decrease the amount of histamine, not increase it. So B is incorrect. C, decreased production of hepcinogen. Well, as we just described in that path, um, it will lead to decreased production of pepsinogen. So hydrochloric acid increases the uh, activity of D cells, increases the amount of somatostatin, which inhibits the chief cells, which will therefore decrease the amount of pepsinogen. So C is correct. And finally, D, decreased production of somatostatin. Well, we know that's not true. D cells will increase their production of somatostatin when stimulated by the hydrochloric acid. So therefore, the only correct answer for question one is C. Question two, which one of the following is most directly affected by negative feedback? So in ABC, we've got a couple of cells and we're essentially asking which one of these cells, when stimulated, leads to a feedback loop which inhibits that same cell. So if we take a look at parietal cells, well, when parietal cells are stimulated, they produce hydrochloric acid. That hydrochloric acid acts on D cells to produce somatostatin, which um, has an inhibitory effect on parietal cells. So therefore, uh, parietal cells are involved in a negative feedback loop because increased stimulation of parietal cells actually results in um, inhibition of those parietal cells through that negative feedback loop involving the um, D cells and somatostatin. So therefore, for question two, B is the correct answer. Question three, the vagus nerve stimulates the parietal cells to produce hydrochloric acid. Which other effect, uh, what other effect could this nerve have that would lead to increase hydrochloric acid production? A, sensitization of the parietal cells to somatostatin. Well, Sensitization of the parietal cells to somatostatin would lead to increased effect of the somatostatin on the parietal cells. And somatostatin has an inhibitory effect on the parietal cells. So therefore, we'd see less production of hydrochloric acid due to sensitization of the parietal cells to somatostatin. So overall, A is not the correct answer because it would lead to less uh, production of hydrochloric acid. B. Desensitization of the parietal cells to histamine. So uh, histamine has a stimulatory effect on parietal cells. So if we desensitize the parietal cells to histamine, we'd see uh, less stimulation of the parietal cell and therefore decreased production of the hydrochloric acid. So therefore, B is incorrect. C, sensitization of the ECL cells to gastrin. Well, Sensitization of ECL cells to gastrin would lead to increased production of histamine, um, which would lead to increased stimulation of parietal cells, which would lead to increased 
production of hydrochloric acid. So therefore, C is the correct answer for question 3. And obviously, uh, since C is correct, D is wrong, as desensitization of the E cells to uh, gastrin would lead to a decreased production of hydrochloric acid. So overall, C is the correct answer for question 3. Question 4, which one of the following outlines the sh shortest route by which a change in T cell activity affects parietal cell activity? A. Increase in pepsinogen leads to an increase in peptides, which leads to an increase in gastrin. So this is a route that is correct. Uh, an increase in pepsinogen will lead to an increase in peptides, which will uh, lead to an increase in gastrin via those G cells. And therefore, um, an increase in gastrin will directly affect the parietal cells and cause an increase in parietal cell activity. So A is looking pretty good. Uh, B, decrease in pepsinogen leads to decrease in peptides, so that's a correct step, um, which leads to a decrease in somatostatin. Now, if you look in the figure, somatostatin is not directly connected to peptides. Peptides um, is connected to the G cells, which uh, produce gastrin, so peptides are very closely related to the production of gastrin, but peptides... Um, are only very indirectly related to the production of somatostatin. So there's quite a long route um, to go around before peptides will actually affect the production of somatostatin. So we can sort of rule out B because it's a very roundabout way in which peptides actually affect somatostatin. We have to go through those um, ECL cells slash um, the effect on parietal cells um, and therefore the effect on the hydrochloric acid, the effect on the D cells, and then finally to somatostatin. So it's quite a long route. B is not the shortest route, so therefore probably the wrong answer. C, a decrease in pepsinogen leads to a decrease in peptides. Yep, we've already established that's correct. Decrease in peptides leads to a decrease in hydrochloric acid. So whilst this might be true, it's also again quite a long route. So, or at least longer than the one described in A. So So decreased pepsinogen does indeed lead to decreased peptides as described before. Decreased peptides leads to decreased stimulation of the G cells, which leads to decreased production of the gastrin, which leads to decreased production uh, decreased stimulation of the parietal cells, which leads to decreased production of the hydrochloric acid. But that is not as short as the path described in A. Uh, so therefore, C is incorrect. And finally, D, G cell activity does not affect parietal cell activity. Well, we know that's not true because A is um, a pathway that does exist. So therefore, um, D is also incorrect. So A is the correct answer for question four. Question five, which of the following is most directly affected by positive feedback? So we've got uh, A, G cells, B, D cells, C, parietal cells, and D, none of the cells uh, shown in the figure are affected by positive feedback. So uh, if you go through all of these, you'll find that T cells are actually the only cell type that is affected by positive feedback. All of them are affected by um, negative feedback otherwise. So um, T cells, the pathway that leads to positive feedback is um, T cells produce pepsinogen, which releases, sorry, which leads to the production of peptides. Peptides uh, increase the stimulation of the G cells, which produce gastrin, which directly has a stimulatory effect on the chief cells, therefore increasing the amount of pepsinogen. So uh, A is correct. Chief cells do um, are, are affected, sorry, by positive feedback and um, are quite directly affected by positive feedback as well. And if you sort of go through the feedback loops for the D cells and the parietal cells, you'll find that they're only really um, within negative feedback loops. They're not really affected by positive feedback because the production of uh, hydrochloric acid in the case of parietal cells and somatostatin in the case of D cells only leads to decreased stimulation of each of those respective cells. So overall, uh, for question five, A is the correct answer, Qi cells, because it is involved in that direct a positive feedback loop involving G cells, pepsinogen, peptides, G cells, and gastrin. So therefore, for question 5A is a